Buongiorno, everybody. Well, uh, he's Christian Perrier, and he will be talking about internalization in Debian. Thank you. Do you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Still? Yeah. Again? <laughs> okay. Oh, that's not the title. Okay, that's the usual joke. And I say hi to my son who's watching. And this was a bet with him that I would show a SpongeBob in one of my talks. And I did so. So I won the bet. <laughs> okay. Let's go for the title. Well, as usual, that would be the gazillions in talk I do an internationalization in Debian for the uh, DebConf. I, I guess in DebConf 50, I will be still be doing that very boring talk. Anyway, I know you all came for one thing to see the nice maps, so I just, <laughs> I just put them at the beginning, and then after you can go away and do more interesting stuff. So what would I talk about? I will try to give you a rough picture of who is involved, who, who is involved in Debian internationalization, who is working on this, what are we working on, and also how we are doing that work. So who is working? Uh, in Debian, we, has, we have this common sense that we are very international project. I, I know you don't see anything. There are yellow spots on the map. You know about this map probably. This is the map of the developers all around the world. So we are, we are feeling that we are very international. If you look at the number of developers, that's less obvious. There are six developers in Africa, 263 in North America, 33 in South America, that's a lot less. 51 in Asia, mostly in Japan. Six in Africa, again, okay, I messed up with the slides. And a lot in Europe. That's too much for me to say it in English, so 577. <laughs> and Oceania is basically this thing on the bottom right, which is named Australia and New Zealand. So as you can see, we are not that international. Well, there are very wide parts of the world where there is, there is basically no Debian developers. But, okay, so we are that international. These are the maps, okay. <laughs> so for those who have not seen this yet, we are basically painting the world in red. So in Debian Potato, we had one language covered for to install the system. In Debian Sarge, uh, in Debian Hoodie, we had 16. Then we jumped to 40 for Debian Sarge, a big hoop. Etch, our last release, has 68 languages covered in the installation system. And Lenny will have, I guess, 60. Okay, let's do it again because we all love that. <laughs> if that wants to work, uh, crap. And oh yeah, I forgot. Maybe someday we will have 60, uh, 78. So let's go back to see <laughs> if it, okay, it doesn't want to go back. Mm, 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 and painting the world in red. So I would say we are that international after all. So. With the IT and crew, I would say, Wunderbar! <laughs> okay, let's try to get a, a closer picture to all these places. Uh, in Africa, you, you have seen the, the map. The map is very empty, basically. Uh, I see two real reasons. We have strong, I said, colonial languages, the French the English, and in some extent, the Arabic language. You see, these are language families in Africa, not all languages. Huh? You see a strong domination of green for Arabic, of um, blue for French, and uh, orange for English. So this is what, in my sense, limits the development of internationalization in Africa, because the communities over there 
have really hard times to feel they should translate stuff in their language, in their local language. So one exception is South Africa, when, where there are some initiatives to develop the localization, and particularly the UNLOC, African Localization Network Project, originates in South Africa, and they led to the development of some tools, namely Putol, Putol which we are using in Debian, and originates in South Africa for projects from the translate.org.za uh, project. So, so Africa is becoming active, not visible in Debian, more visible in um, end user project. So let's go to North America, North and Central America. I put the two together. Well, we have 100% coverage well, for what I would call the colonial languages. <laughs> colonial languages, English basically, and Spanish for Central America. But we could also have more coverage for indigenous languages. There are some initiatives that are beginning to cover the native languages of North America, and we'll see later of South America as well. There is a great variety of language and a great of cultural richness to cover. And a few initiatives are beginning to work on translation for these languages. So I would like to introduce you to the Sequan Patsin. Okay, everybody got it? Sequan Patsin or Shuswap translation. This is an interesting effort that began in Canada, for instance, for a tribe of I would say 500 people in Canada's Alberta who speak this language, which I will not pronounce a second time. <laughs> and uh, I did it very badly anyway. So this is something that will develop, I guess. Even in North America, there is not only English and Spanish. <laughs> Let's go down, down under to South America. Okay, South America, we have two very strong internationalization community. Either the Spanish one or the Brazilian Portuguese one are very strong, very efficient at translating, inter, uh, localizing stuff in their languages. And again, we could have the very same interesting situation where indigenous languages, <coughs> and even more in South America, they are a strong feeling to develop the localization for indigenous languages. I had very interesting talks with people from Bolivia, or from Venezuela, about localization in Aymara, in Quechua, and other mm -hmm. languages I don't remember about. And this is beginning again. Also in Argentina, there are indigenous languages, ex even though there are some unclassified or undocumented areas. So you will all be happy to learn we are living in un an unclassified area these days, but still. Uh, one challenge for these communities is to be able to translate not from English, but mostly from Let's for take an example for Quechua or Aymara from Spanish, which brings some interesting technical challenges for people who are developing tools to translate, because we should allow people to work from another language. The same stands for Africa, where many people want to translate from French. Asia, uh, the picture of Asia is pretty hard. I made it on purpose very confusing, very complicated. I don't expect you to read everything. But the basic picture, we have strong communities in China, Japan, Japan and Korea who are doing a lot of work for internationalization, and especially in Debian. We have a very strong community in South Asia, mostly India, who is translating in all the languages from this place. There are 21 or 22, I never remember, official languages in India, in nine scripts, nine ways to write things down, these ones. This is the letter K in all scripts of India. And there are very good developments in that matter, and especially also in Debian. We have a few localization, including the installer. There are also some local and governmental initiatives, uh, particularly again in India, but 
as some of you may know, in this small country named Bhutan, which is quite a model for me for to develop international or uh, localization in a local language. Europe, uh, Europe, we all know about this mosaic of language. Of course, Europe has numerous efforts to localize software. There we have a lot of communities in Debian. We are translating in European languages. We cover nearly all of them. We have strengths, but we have some weaknesses currently. And these weaknesses also apply to, I would say, nearly all the localization communities. I feel like I explained to people all this week that I feel like our localization team are weakening these days. We don't see many, many people coming more inside our teams. I don't know exactly the real reason, but they are going somewhere else. I think I know where they are going. Uh, most of the people who are new to free software wants to want to trans work on translation when they are non-technical people. And most of the people who come to free software to Debian, the Debian world currently come through Ubuntu. And there is a strong demand in Ubuntu for localization, translation. They have an infrastructure, but this thing is not very organized as these days and doesn't interact currently very well with Debian. We had discussions this week about this stuff. So <laughs> about Europe, I wanted to mention that. Many people feel like we have strong localization teams. Um, the French team is known as oh, the strongest team. We do everything. Indeed, we are very weak. We are few people, not that many. And we are weakening. That's important. Oceania, uh, Oceania is basically Australia, New Zealand. At the moment, I don't know about many, many people or many, many initiatives over there to localize, to work on internationalization, except if we include Indonesia, where there are a few local initiatives, some individual, mostly. I don't know about many governmental efforts to develop localization over there. So what are we translating now? I spent a lot of time on who is translating, so what are we translating? Well, the most well-known, my uh, pet stuff in Debian, this is basically DebConf templates. Not because this is the most end-user oriented, but probably because this is the easiest to do. These are nice uh, graphs, thanks to Nicolas Francois. Uh, we are showing the development between Edge and Lenny release cycles and the development of translation. These are interesting tools to see what, which teams are strong, which teams are weakening. Uh, for instance, yeah, if you see the Portuguese team. I don't know if you see my spot, yes. It, the, this is a huge effort to bring stuff. On the other hand, I think this is the Vietnamese team is weakening slightly. <coughs> or you can see somewhere, I don't know where, the Swedish team, which was weakening and then revived recently. But as you can see, there is a good translation ratio for this DebConf templates. Because we have good tools. What happened at the end of January? Can you repeat the question? What happened at the end of January? Probably Nicola fixed some bug in the graph stuff. We are also doing for these DebConf templates, user interaction. Maybe people of you have heard about this project, English Reviews. I launched that back in 2007 and under the name The Smith Project on April 1st. Then no one believed this was serious. This was serious. And the Debian Elton and English is currently, uh, the, the effort is currently stopped, but we will renew it for Lenny plus one. And we reviewed 150 packages for which we reviewed DebConf templates and package descriptions. And of course, this famous NMU campaign, which is aimed to bring these DebConf templates translation ratio up and up and up. It started in May which is easily to spot here. 
for the Galician translation. We benefited a lot from it. And I actually NMU'd more than 100 packages <laughs> out of six or nearly 700 w which are yeah. using DevConf. Big effort, easy to do, and good results. Another target are native Debian packages. Native Debian packages, these are our stuff, not upstream. We don't want to translate <coughs> upstream. We don't want to translate GNOME or KDE. They are there own internationalization team. But dpackage, apt, aptitude, this is our stuff. We have to translate it. We have a very good internationalization of these things. We have good tools for doing this internationalization and the good tools to track them down. This is huge, this is difficult. Uh, I think that who in the room has been involved in dpackage translation, someone? Yeah, he's here. Uh, this is a nightmare, basically a nightmare, because very technical stuff and hard to translate. Not quite worth it. Having aptitude to translate in French, Spanish, or whatever is very good. So the results are here. Many languages are, have good translation ratio for these difficult tools. I'm sorry for this table, which is probably unreadable, but Anyway, package description, that's the Debian description translation project or named TDTP. This, <coughs> this was a Lenny release goal. So the tools had to cope with the translated descriptions of packages. The, we achieved an improved infrastructure, DDTP, and what is named DDTSS, which is basically a web interface to get and send package description translations. We improved the methods. We are trying to improve the English usage in this description, but we reviewed only 150 packages. There are, you know, the number of binary packages in Debian, 20,000 or so. So this is a huge task, and I always tell to maintainer, <laughs> please pay attention to the use of English in your packages. Please ask for review and get you corrected. Even the native speakers, by the way. And now, this is the very important and most important news. This is now flowing to the archive, and thanks to the huge work of the FTP Masters team and the IATN team in this room and this week, since yesterday, the package descriptions that are translated in Grisus DDTP are flowing to the archive, and you can see them when you are using packages.debian.org or aptitude. So this project, which started a few years ago, is finally giving results. And I think they both deserve a big, big applause for that. <laughs> no, not the moon. You can see in aptitude, or actually you cannot see, but this is displaying the description in French of my pet package, namely Kenaweb uh, in French. And this is the same stuff in packages.debian.org. So as soon as someone translates through the DTP, this will flow down here. And this is very end user oriented. In contrary to DevConf templates or dpackage, which are oriented to administrators, this is an user oriented and a huge task. Now we have a huge challenge because we have to translate all these damn package description. So please write them down correctly, but not too long, please. Translation of documentation is a huge task, long-standing task. We have large documents. They are basically written in HTML or XML. And for most of them, unfortunately, we don't have a very efficient or easy to use infrastructure. The current translator have to write XML files from the original ones. So very manual stuff, not very easy. Some of them, such as man pages, are going through a get text uh, infrastructure with the use of PO4A, 
we are pure for AIing anything. And some documentation are translated, so translatable this way, such as the developer's reference. Many man pages also are translatable with get text. So the IT and team is trying to provide patches for this, and I urge maintainers to please adopt these patches. It it makes our life much much easier. The website also is a good target to, for translation in Debian. It is a long-standing effort. It give it, it is giving good <coughs> results. Uh, these statistics you are seeing, I, I picked them to illustrate the, the slide and not make it too empty because uh, Nicolas activated the statistic very recently so we don't have graph for a long time. It, so it's basically meaning nothing. But there are, as you can see, there are many languages in which our website is translated. And unfortunately, with a quite difficult um, method to work and pretty not easy for newcomers to cope with. So we should improve that part also and use probably PO4A. There is also another target, uh, some discussions I had this week with the wiki people, with Franklin, namely, to try improving the translation of wiki.debian.org, which is becoming a source of information more and more important for our users. So we should try to have an efficient way to translate this. Currently, we do not. How we are doing things, how we are doing th all these things, I will not show you everything, of course, of course, that's not my point. The point is to give a, a general picture, and anyway, I am not the one doing the work. I am just the one presenting the work and taking the credit for it. <laughs> one of the main points what in the recent development is the introduction of the new server named Churro, Churro for Spanish speakers. It was introduced in 2006 during uh, one of the Extremadura sessions, and it is becoming the main IITNN server in Debian. Currently under IITNN.debian.net, this is not admin by DSA, this is admin by us, ourselves, or I would say Felipe mostly, please raise his hand, Felipe, thank you. <laughs> and all the hidden magic we have, all the statistics you can see on the website, most of the material is coming from Churro, thanks to many, many scripts and many magic stuff written either by Felipe or by Nicolas, who is standing close to him. At the end of 2007, also in an Extremadura session, we moved the DDTP, which was running on one of the server of Grisou, Grisou, thank you, to Churro. <laughs> yes. This guy deserves the applause, yes. And all this stuff is now running from this server, which is becoming more and more important for Debian. And someday, uh, in 2008, I forgot to mention, I did put in production the Putol interface. Putol is a web interface for translators to get translation, even do translation online. And this interface is now able to directly commit translation for the Debian installer in the Debian installer SVN, which is kind of the way we would like someday to work. Have a local repository for translation and hook up on it some stuff, oh, Putol, a web interface, but maybe translator will want to work directly in SVN or maybe some other magic. Maybe someday we will want to hook Rosetta, why not, on it, to exchange information with the people who are doing the translation and avoid duplication of efforts. There have been some discussions about this. And someday, we. Maybe in 2009, we will be able to hook the DebConf translations, this thing I was talking at the beginning, this easy stuff, 
on it and maybe move to iitnn.debian.org. So that's psychological, you know. Turn this into a real production server. This is going on, and again, this will maybe happen thanks to one or maybe two sessions in Extremadura. Again, thank you for hosting the i18n.debian.net. Yeah, again, some applause, yes. Wunderbar. The workflow we have with uh, our, I started to talk about it before, anyway. The problem we have in Debian, we have very dispersed material. We have things in packages, we have things on the website, in the wiki, etc. And we need to collect this into some place, this central place I was talking about. So that needs a lot of scripts and magic to bring this to a central place. I just discovered my integration mark went up, upside down. Interesting, Spanish effect, I guess. We want to hook Puttle on it, but this will bring us a lot of scalability problem, especially if we hook the Debian descriptions. There are 20,000 packages, about three or four paragraphs per packages. That means a huge number of PO files. And for instance, Puttle has never been designed for such amount of information. So we are working with the Poodle developer to improve the efficiency of their software also. One interesting development of namely this week, this is a result, direct result of the DebConf and DebCamp, the TDEBs. I will give you some words about the TDEBs, don't go into the grumpy or nasty details because I don't understand them. <laughs> TDEBs come from two ideas. The first one is make packages lighter. Localization stuff is very hard, very um, space consuming, particularly for the embedded device. So the idea of TDEB was <laughs> recently revived by Neil Williams, please raise hands, thank you, to allow for MDebian to remove translations and bring them back only for the language that needed. This is basically the ID. And the ID number two, okay, I added this slide very le late, so this is the ID number two, is to allow independent update of translations. For instance, be able to update aptitude translations for stable after stable has been released and this independently of the package. Two of these ID combined in the idea of TDEBs, which is basically having some special DEB packages containing the localization and translation material. So this had a huge impact all over Debian, basically. So this week we made a few discussions first and then a very, very efficient meeting with the FTP master, Neil was there, the IATN and folks were there, release manager uh, Luke was there, and we brainstorming stuff and this gave the results in the small wiki page here. Thank you Mark for collecting the IDs and basically I think Progressively, we will adapt the tools for Lenny Plus One, make some packages use TDEBs for Lenny Plus One, and the point is to make a release goal for Lenny Plus Two. This is a long standing effort. It will take a lot of time, discussions, meetings. We will have one in November in Extremadura about this. <coughs> I hope so. So, that will be a huge progress, I think, because we will disconnect translation from packages in some way, but not too much. Hmm? I will end up talking about the IATN workforce. This, this is the idea I got when uh, Steve did his team survey. If some of you read the report, he mentioned especially the IATN team as a 
strange case because many people were saying this is a good team and I was saying, well, I'm not sure this is a good team because I'm too much acting as a kind of team leader or whatever that I feel sometimes that I'm censoring stuff and people are just waiting that I start project or whatever. This is the challenge for teams, you know. So basically we are slowly building an IATNM core team. Those who, do, who are doing the things, uh, I would mention, a f I already mentioned a few people around there, but those people who run Churro are basically those people. We will need to develop collaboration. I mentioned earlier we are weakening in some way the localization resources, the people who want to work on localization tend to go elsewhere and namely to go to Ubuntu. Whether we like it or not, this is a fact. So we need to develop collaboration talk with Ubuntu people to develop this and help them to organize their resources because they are not organized this way. I have been confirmed this this week. So we need to talk and gather or whatever, I don't know. We need also to lead this community, to animate this community, which, which is quite a challenge. Uh, well, uh, I know that some many people are expecting this from myself, but that's a huge task and not easy to do. So That's the point of IATN workforce. I know more good ideas about it. Okay, again, Saturn. And basically that was my final point. Not really deep, hardcore technical stuff. And yes, I did put a SpongeBob again. Yes, I won the bet twice. <laughs> and now I'm open to your questions and whatever you might want to ask me. And please speak slowly if you are a native speaker, for God's sake. <laughs> You're not, but please speak slowly too. <laughs> uh, this question might be coming out of my own ignorance, but uh, I was wondering how the developers who are not directly involved in translation, uh, perhaps because we don't know enough languages to be much used, how can we help? Uh, is there a central place that we can go to where we could learn the kinds of things that can be done to make the job easier for you. Uh, a specific case in point is I have been wanting to convert all my man pages into P4A, and I have tried looking it up a couple of times, and I got lost. And I have never actually managed to do so, even though I want to. Uh, yeah. Where how can I go to get help to help how, you guys? How could developers <laughs> get more help or more information about internationalization? I think this is a, one of the challenges I mentioned earlier. We, we did a lot of development, a lot of good work. You mentioned PO4A. And now we should also think about documenting it. And allow, I've been requested many, many times to document in the developer's reference, for instance, what I often explain to maintainers do how to do things well. So we have to do that. The challenge we are facing, this is a very time-consuming task. And the only people who know how to do these things, uh, such as PO4A, our PO4A master, Nicolas, has only two hands. and. These hands are already doing some very good stuff on the IATN servers. So yes, please, the Nicolas, next time, you please document the PO4A process. That's an order. You have to do it. Thank you. <laughs> no, fr seriously speaking, yes, we have a challenge. We need to collect this documentation, and IATN.debian.org could also become a central place for this. Marga? I, I have a few questions from the IRC. First, uh, Hauke wants to know some numbers about the people working on internationalization in Debian. How, how many people are working and uh, how many people would be expected to be in the core team you mentioned? How, how many people are working on 
translation in Debian? That's a very tough question, actually. I would say it's easy for many languages. One. One person for Tamil, one person for Gujarati, but dozens of persons for Spanish, maybe dozens of persons for French. We don't really count. We we don't ask people to register on some fancy website with nice colors and therefore we cannot count. They just show up, they subscribe to mailing lists and they start collaborating and that's all. This is our only process. So frankly speaking, I don't know. I, I would say not more than a few per languages and we have like well, if we count DI, I said 60 <coughs> languages, but most languages are only covering DI and not that much. So I would say not more than 10 to 20 for the most, the biggest teams and down to one person for language. S what I would suggest to people wanting to join and know more is to, to subscribe to the Debian i and mailing list and start asking over there. About this core team, basically that will be the people who invest themselves the more and start to work on these things we need to do about TDEBs or documenting the processes or whatever. I, I don't think it really needs to be formalized to say, I am a member of the core team. Yes, good, I am the leader. Yeah. No, but it always happens that the team forms when people are doing things. We did a team because few people just joined together. That's all. That's, this is what I call a team. And this is, as far as I know, this is how all teams are working in Debian. So. Uh, second question from IRC, Ingo uh, wants to know about quality control for the translations because some translations are not so nice. So is there any plan for doing any kind of quality control? So quality control, reviewing, improving the translation basically. Well this is a recurrent question in translating. Should we translate everything and do the QA after or do the QA in the process. So this is basically belonging to the teams. The Spanish team may want to use its own process for doing QA. They have a very formalized one, the same one we have for the French translation. Other teams are just doing stuff. <laughs> this is their process. The point would be yes. The the quality control should happen during the translation process. For instance, I mentioned Putol, I mentioned web interface. One could speak also about the other well-known interface, which is Rosetta. This should include quality control, review, criticism, suggestions, and collections. But at the end, the limit is the number of people doing the work. And I can tell you, even for French, the quality control is not that good. There are some horrible mistakes slipping out. Typos, uh, whatever, spelling errors, uh, bad translations and the like. This, this is probably important currently for the package descriptions. We, we need to enforce a better quality control. Yeah, the question over here. I hope I answered. Um, I just wanted to add that uh, we have the same problem for the English package descriptions, for example. I mean, there are also some very horrible ones you really can't understand, uh, and many with typos and stuff. So it's not a problem that's unique to translations. I mean, we have the same problem with the English ones as well. Yeah, qu quality control uh, or the control of English, the English usage, is certainly important. Well, this is basically what I mentioned. Theoretically, each English text exposed to the public, package descriptions, 
website documentation should be reviewed by the Debian L10 English mailing list. But this mailing list currently has, I would say, two or three active members. I mentioned how many developers I mentioned in North America, 260 and a little bit more. There are 70 Debian developers in the UK. So, yeah, maybe some people should also work on English localization. We need you guys to improve our own English. And we, you need us to improve your own English also. Uh, you mentioned Poodle. I just went to the Poodle website for Debian. And there are the DI translations that you said are committed directly to the SVN and the uh, pod debconf translations. What happens with those translations? Uh, what is currently on Poodle? What is accessible to Poodle when, yeah, rock and roll. <laughs> Thank you. I tried to mention on the Poodle website, the only production, and I would say semi-production stuff, is DI. This is the only thing that flows somewhere. PO DevConf is experimental. I think, I hope you saw on the Putol website that this is in some way experimental. Anyway, nobody has access currently. So actually, people can only view the PO DevConf stuff, but cannot translate this way. Make <coughs> suggestions maybe, but that's all. Actually, the PO DevConf in Putol is only my own sandbox. We probably need a sandbox server for me to play and not break existing stuff, but this is what I mentioned. This is the future. It does not end up anywhere. Uh, if I have time, I may ask about this. The, the workflow we expect about PO DevCon specifically is allowing translators to make translation either through Putol or through the SVN access in a central SVN where we will keep these PO DevCon translation. And we have to find a way for maintainers to grab this translation at build time, some, maybe some dev helper tool, some hook in PO DevConf, I don't know. But we need to gather these things and allow you developers to grab these things down to your packages. But I don't know how to do that currently. Christian, one of the things we looked at with the FTP masters was that whole idea of possibly having a second diff GZ that contains the, the updates for the translations and that could be uh, a feed into that to ha help the maintainers get the updated translations at build time because they would be then part of the app get source or dpackage source x. You build. mean yeah. having a, a second def gz for updated translation yeah. which could include the po conf stuff also? also? Yeah. yeah. Yes. And the point could be then that our central place would generate <coughs> this stuff. Yeah. That could be an idea similarly to tdevs stuff. So yes. It would be based on the TDEB scripts and the TDEB generation process. That, that's interesting. Yeah, I think this is a way to make the balance between packages be, being dispersed and maintained uh, individually and the need for translation to have a central place, that balance. Are there other questions or comments here, yeah, Nicola? I would like to, to give an answer to, to manage an additional one. I think uh, if you have some request to internationalize some program or documentation, uh, one I think <coughs> could be to send a request to the IA18N mailing list. Uh, I'm reading that mailing list, so I will uh, be able to, to answer, but I'm pretty sure there are other people who uh, can work with PO4A. And if you have some request to localize some packages, I mean to, to translate the, the package, 
Then there is one tool which is named PO Depconf Report PO. And in the version of Unstable and Lenny, you just have to go into the, the PO di directory and call PO Depconf Report PO dash dash call. This will send an email to all the, the previous translator with the, the language mailing list in copy, the language mailing list which is specified in the PO file. And it will also send an email to the Debian i18 and mailing list so that if the, if the document is not translated in a language, the language coordinator for, for the language can request their team to, to translate the document. I think it's what could, could be recommended to, to the developers and it is <coughs> what is currently or what is going to be documented in the developer reference. Actually, I have a patch for the developer's reference to explain all what Nicolas explained. But Nicolas, are you ready to cope with Manoj Debian rules files? <laughs> I had a uh, follow-up to that. Uh, scalability. I have 36 packages. I can send you 36 requests, but then there comes the next developer. They have, I know people who have 200 packages. And uh, this, as <coughs> Christian mentioned, you already are busy. So even though this is a one-off thing, I can ask you to help me. I was looking for something where we can people like me who are not very familiar with internationalization, we can do things on our own, set up the infrastructure in my rules file without having to bother you. So do as much as I can to get move the process along. And if such a document can be created, it doesn't need to just reside in the developer's reference. We can, I think this is important enough to move into the technical policy as uh, mm -hmm. something that people must do. Because I think internationalization is important enough that uh, it shouldn't be a best practices. It should be, mm. yes. this is what the project has said that we will do in order to make Debian more useful. So, but before I can put it into policy, it has to be something more than me personally requesting a favor. So I need, there needs to be a documentation and a process which can then be put into policy. Uh, do you see the difference? Yeah, thank you, Manoj. I think we're running out of time, so I will have to stop the question or comments. And I will have to thank you, everybody, for listening this very early talk after the party and waking up. And now I need some coffee. <laughs> thank you.